Plugins, repositories, dependencies. These all make up the Gradle build script. But what do they do and how do we use them? And what even is the build script in the first place? If you find the Gradle build script confusing, keep watching to learn the answers to all these questions and more. By seeing line by line how to create a build script for this simple Java application, you will be able to work more confidently in your own Gradle projects. Before getting our hands dirty in the build script, it's helpful to understand why it's there in the first place. Of course, Gradle's purpose is to build your application. To do that, it needs some basic information about it, like what language you're using. If you correctly configure Gradle for your application, then it will efficiently build it every single time. To configure Gradle, we use the build script. It's a file containing either Groovy or Kotlin code. These JVM languages have many similarities, but we'll use Groovy because this survey says people like it. Anyway, by writing Groovy code in the build script, we configure what's called the Gradle project. With this in place, Gradle does awesome things like compiling code, running tests, and executing our application. With the background out the way, let's build up a Gradle build script from scratch for an application that generates inspiring messages like this. Follow along as we go. Create an empty project using Gradle init or your IDE. Here's our empty build script, a file named build.gradle. It's just a simple text file where we can write Groovy code. Fortunately, you don't need to be a Groovy black belt to use Gradle. What we do in this tutorial uses very simple syntax. With an empty build script, Gradle doesn't do anything useful. We can't actually build anything. That makes sense because we haven't told Gradle anything about our project yet. Let's fix that. Most importantly, we need to tell it what language we're using. For us, that's the world's best programming language, Java. How do we configure Gradle to build Java applications? We use a plugin. A plugin is a bundle of functionality written by the Gradle team themselves or by the wider community. We'll apply the Java plugin, then explore what it does. Type plugins, then opening and closing curly brackets. In this block is where we apply any plugins we want by ID. The ID for the Java project is, wait for it, Java. Type ID passing the string Java in single quotes. That's it. Simple, huh? For core Gradle plugins, use this syntax, but for third-party community plugins, you also need to specify a version. With the Java plugin applied, our project has extra tasks available for compiling code, building jars, and more. If you're working in IntelliJ IDEA, click this button to ensure build script changes are reflected. The plugin also configures specific directories for application code and resources. Let's go ahead and add a package for source main Java. Call the package what you like and add a Java class ASCII art generator. Copy the code from the GitHub repository linked in the description. In summary, this class takes an argument and adds a random but hilarious exclamation to the end and prints the value. This code is deliberately simple, but we'll extend it later to output some mesmerizing ASCII art. Build the application by running the Gradle wrapper script from your project directory, passing the build task. This most importantly compiles the code, but does other work like generating a jar file. Once complete, the build directory contains compiled classes and a jar file. If you're curious, execute the jar file with this command and a single argument to the application. Oops, Java doesn't know which class to execute. We'll fix it later with some build script features we haven't covered yet, but there's actually an easier way to run the application directly through Gradle. To do that, swap out the Java plugin for the application plugin. This plugin automatically applies the Java plugin so we get all the same functionality plus some juicy extras for executing applications. Specifically, it adds a run task. But before we run that, we need to configure the application plugin to say which class to execute. In Gradle, plugins expose properties which change the way they behave. You configure these properties on what's called in Gradle an extension object, accessed from the build script. If that sounds complicated, it's a lot simpler in practice. 
to access the application plugins extension object called application with curly brackets. In here, set the main class property to the fully qualified class name string. Now run the run task. Oh, that sounded a bit silly, didn't it? Now execute the run task using dash dash args to pass the argument. Okay, cool. So you now have the basics of applying and configuring plugins. Before we move on, note that plugins appear at the top of the build script. If anything else comes first, you get this error. Other than that, the order of the build script elements isn't important. It's time to jazz this application up a bit. Let's make it shine with some beautiful ASCII art. To do that, there's a handy library called jfiglet, and it's available from the Maven Central repository. This neat library lets you create ASCII art in just one line. Sweet! Make this small change to ASCII art generator to use figlet font. Uh-oh, when we tried to import this class, it's not available. Any idea why? jfiglet isn't on the Java class path. Even with the right import statement, the run task gives a nasty compilation error. That's fair enough, since we haven't told Gradle about this library yet. In Gradle, to pull in external libraries, you configure dependencies. These are jar files with a specific group name and version, which Gradle downloads from the configured repositories. It then adds them to the Java class path, so they're available to your application. First, we'll tell Gradle to look in the Maven Central repository, called repositories, then in curly brackets, call Maven Central. This is a method, so don't forget the round brackets. Now Gradle knows where to look, let's tell it what to look for. Call dependencies with curly brackets, then implementation and pass a string with the dependency group name and version. What's the significance of the cryptic sounding implementation? It's Gradle lingo which means the dependency is added to both the compile and runtime class paths. With the dependency added, the IDE now recognizes the import. We just need to add this IO exception thrown by the new method to the method signature. Now execute run again. Amazing. Trippy. Okay, now you know how to use external libraries. Here's a tasty tip to make working in the build script a piece of cake. Like I said earlier, the build script configures the Gradle project. It's a project class whose API docs are on the Gradle website. Why is this helpful? Well, as well as the repositories and dependency methods we already used, you can see other methods and properties you might be interested in. For example, you can set the group and version used when publishing a Java library to a repository. And now it's the bit I know you've been looking forward to. Let's add a test. <coughs> This is easy because the Java plugin automatically runs tests whenever you run build. Create a new test source directory, source test Java, and add the same package as earlier. Add an ASCII art generator test class and copy the code from the GitHub repository. This code uses the JUnit5 test framework with a single test to check that an exception isn't thrown. JUnit5 is an external library and how do we tell Gradle about external libraries? That's right, independencies, just like we did for jfiglet, except with a subtle twist. Rather than implementation, we call test implementation. This makes the library available to tests, but not to our production code. A clean class path is a happy class path. These are examples of what's known in Gradle as dependency configurations. To learn about other dependency configurations, Check out this video by following the link in the description. With the JUnit5 dependency configured, run the test task. This executes any tests and generates a report. That's just perfect. Oh, it's empty. Unfortunately, Gradle by default assumes JUnit4. Since we're so bleeding edge, we'll configure the modern JUnit5 instead. We'll use another build script feature, configuring a task. We'll set up the test task to use JUnit5. Type the name of the task with curly brackets. Any code in this block configures the task. You can browse the docs for a specific task type to learn how to configure it. For the test task, we'll call use JUnit platform. Rerun test. And our test report shows one beautiful test was successful. Cool. Before we move on though, note the subtle difference between configuring a plugin and configuring a task. 
Configuring a plugin may affect multiple tasks exposed by that plugin, but configuring a task only affects that task. Now we've ticked the test checkbox, let's fix the error from earlier running the jar file. The manifest file, which gets packaged up in the jar file, is missing the main class attribute. To fix that, configure the jar task which generates the jar file. Like many tasks, it gets executed automatically with build. Call jar with curly brackets, then manifest with curly brackets, then attributes which takes a map. The key is main class and the value the fully qualified class name string. Run build, run the jar file, and everything's fantastic. Oh, we got a different error. By default, the jar file doesn't include the Java runtime dependencies. Let's make another tweak to turn our jar file into a fat jar. That's a jar that contains not only our code, but also any library code our code uses. Copy this snippet from the GitHub repository. It configures the jar task to add runtime dependencies to the jar. Run build, run the jar file, and now it's working a treat. And inspecting the jar file shows it contains all those tasty jfiglet classes. This jar runs standalone, ready to be shared with your victim of choice. But did you know that a Gradle project can actually have multiple build scripts? What? Yes, they're called multi-project builds and help improve maintainability and performance on growing Gradle projects. To learn how to set one up the right way, check out the awesome Gradle Multi-Project Masterclass. It's free, so just click the link to get started. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.